Hi, I'm Dr. Mahoney. I am a primary care sports medicine fellowship. We are streaming live from our office in Blacksburg, right down the road from Virginia Tech, so go Hokies. Um, we also have three other locations out here in Southwest Virginia. And then Ortho Virginia is also located in the Lynchburg area, Virginia Beach, Richmond, and Northern Virginia. So um, if you want more information about Ortho Virginia, you can go to orthovirginia.com. We're a very large practice all across the state and we'd be happy to help you. So today we're going to talk about what is primary care sports medicine because that is kind of a new term that a lot of patients have not heard before. So I did a residency in family medicine. So three years of working in the hospital, working in a clinic, um, and I use a lot of my elective times for shadowing orthopedic surgeons and pain management, spine doctors, um, all sorts of musculoskeletal care, um, as well as primary care sports like myself. And then last year I did a fellowship in sports medicine in Tennessee, um, in Knoxville. So I have a lot of experience learning from primary care sports medicine uh, physicians like myself, as well as orthopedic surgeons, um, athletic trainers, uh, physical therapists, um, working with all sorts of athletes. Um, so we like to consider ourselves part of the comprehensive musculoskeletal care team. Um, a lot of times we're able to treat basically anything head to toe, but if there's something that we are unable to address in the office, we work closely with our surgical colleagues, um, can get a consult whenever needed, and then also love working with uh, physical therapists and just bouncing ideas off of each other to get the best care possible for our patients. Um, some things that I specifically like to do are concussions, um, ankle sprains, arthritis, I love doing injections. Um, I do diagnostic ultrasound as well. So um, if someone's coming in and they're like, oh, my hip's snapping or my shoulder's catching, um, worried I might have a tear, um, ligaments, tendons, muscles, there's all sorts of things that we could look at under ultrasound, evaluate dynamically and potentially offer various types of injections. So that's basically, uh, I said concussions, I said those. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions. If you find this helpful, you can share. Um, share your friends or families. If you know anyone in the area or someone who might, I don't know, some, someone that can be helped by this, please share. Caitlin, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to share with you some questions that have come in from participants. <coughs> and how does that sound now? Is that good? Fantastic. <clears throat> Do I need to be an athlete to see a sports medicine provider? That's a good question. Um, so anyone who has the desire to do a specific function that is causing them pain, um, I would consider an athlete. So some people come in because they want to garden, but they are having pain when they're doing gardening. So we can talk about their particular setup. What about gardening is hurting? Um, how can we fix that? Um, all, to, all activity levels of a professional athletes to someone who just wants to play one soccer tournament um, once a year. Um, gosh, I would consider anyone an athlete. It's someone who is at work, they need to sit all day and it's hurting them. We can address what can we do to make them more comfortable at work. So Sonia asks, so for example, if my knee has just started to bother me, would I call you and not my usual PCP? It's up to you. I'd be happy to see you. Um, totally up to you. And I would be happy to communicate back to your primary care doctor. Um, let them know, fill them in. Um, but I'd be happy to see you if something just started hurting. That's totally appropriate. <clears throat> Caitlin. Uh, Dr. Mahoney, please move a little bit closer to, to us and to the microphone. Um, don't worry, you, you actually look as if you're further away. Um, <clears throat> but also uh, speak loudly as you dare. Sure. Yeah. Um, Fred asks, what, kind, what type of arthritis help do you address? Hands and fingers, non-sports, joints? Sure. Um basically anything. Um, we do, sorry, <laughs> I'll try to speak louder. Um, 
I can evaluate anything by x-ray, and then if an injection is appropriate, we can order, offer any sorts of injections to fingers, wrists, ankles, elbows, knees, hips. Um, and then I have a counterpart at the office here, Dr. Vijapura. She's able to do necks and back. Thanks for answering that. Um, another question, in your management of concussion, do you use the impact concussion management system? And how does that work? What is its value if, if you use it? Sure. Um, so I am credentialed as a impact consultant. So um, that means that we are able to offer the neurocognitive impact test in the office. Um, we can get a baseline or if you come in as a concussion, we're able to look at your past impact results and then retest you to see where you compare to where you're at and then use that to kind of tailor alongside all the physical exam findings we find in the office to determine the best course of treatment and monitor you through that. Thank you. Um, it's asked, my daughter is a high school athlete and they do not stretch before uh, beginning each practice. So what's, what's the value of stretching? Sure. Um, so we used to think that holding long stretches for a long period of time before practice was a great idea. Um, but now the best way to warm up that we know is more of a dynamic warm up. So usually what I recommend is kind of like a light jog or a bike, something like that. And then instead of a static stretch where you hold something, um, kind of taking through the motions. And sometimes when I have athletes come into the office, we'll do that together um, and make recommendations and see what kind of is the best fit. Chandler, who asked the question about stretching um, <clears throat> and high school athletes, also is asking a sort of a follow-up, what's your relationship with high school athletic trainers? Oh, okay, that's a good question. I was an athlete myself, um, so, Started at a young age, played through college, and um, in my fellowship and residency, I was able to uh, be on the sidelines with high school football. Um, now we're uh, covering two different football teams for at the high school level, as well as a couple of college teams. So a lot of experience working with athletic trainers, and they are super valuable, and I love communicating with them. I think they're great to include. Uh, a very important question related to who you see. W can walk-in patients come to you to receive treatment? Of course. Um, we are working on expanding our hours. Um, come January, we expect to be here um, in evenings and on weekends as well. Um, so, and I'm happy to see walk-ins. I think it's great to be able to see someone as soon as it happens. I often hear oh, I went to the emergency room and I waited so long and they did this and I don't feel better. Um, and I'd be happy to be the first person to address that. That's why I'm here. Uh, Joan asks, I've been struggling with pain in the back of my thigh for some time. I walk about 40 minutes a day and there's no pain when I walk. Um, is this common? I mean, do you have any initial thoughts about what Joan's experiencing? Sure, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen with that. It would be really helpful to be able to evaluate you in the office. Um, it's hard to answer over the, over the phone, kind of, unfortunately. <clears throat> and Sanja follows up to her earlier question about whether it's more beneficial to see you or her PCP, um, who is an internal medicine specialist. I mean, is it better to begin with one type of primary care than another? Sure. Um, if your internal medicine doc likes taking care of your knee or whatever injury that's going on and you value their opinion, keep going to them. But um, I'm happy to see you as well. Um, I'm not going to make that recommendation for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how to really answer that. I don't they're qualified. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how to answer that one. Uh, it's asked, do you do any remote online appointments 
or is in-person preferred or necessary? I think especially as a new patient, it's really great to be able to evaluate you because a lot of these things are so hard to kind of tease out over the phone or on a Facebook Live. Um, so telemedicine is also great, but I think that has a, a place for like follow-ups, um, checking in, going over imaging results, seeing how physical therapy is going. Um, but. We are capable of offering telemedicine when it's appropriate. <clears throat> and it is asked, what ages patients do you treat? What's the age range? So this week, for example, I think my youngest patient is about two. And my oldest so far this week has been 93. So quite varied. <laughs> <clears throat> now, uh, Quick question, uh, my shins hurt after running. How do I tell that I have shin splints? What do I do? So that is um, a common diagnosis um, and usually does have anterior shin pain, but we would want to make sure that you don't have something going on like a stress fracture, which could be more serious. So that's something we would want to see you in person to really narrow that one down because that could get dicey. <laughs> Someone has commented, um, I hadn't heard prior to today that Ortho Virginia has a primary care offering. Um, are you alone in what you do in Ortho Virginia, or do you know, do you have peers who share that same scope of practice across the Commonwealth? Sure. Um, so there are multiple primary care sports medicine docs across Ortho Virginia, and I just want to clarify we're not offering like comprehensive primary care. Um, we're offering the musculoskeletal side of things. So um, I'm not going to be the one that takes over your annual physical or anything like that. But for bones, muscles, tendons, concussions, those things, happy to do it. And there are, if you look on our website, you can filter through sports medicine and see who is primary care sports medicine on the website. Is there any information on your personal web page about the kinds of treatments you offer or the conditions that you treat? Yep, there is on my web page, even if you probably just Google, um, you would be able to find a pretty comprehensive list of the things that I can offer. Um, and then if you had any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them over the phone. A question from Alexander. I just had labrum repair on my right hip. So a general pelvis question, um, what top three exercises would you recommend for strengthening uh, the labrum? So that's a hard question for me to answer because I'm not sure when your surgery was, what part of the stage of rehab you're at and what your hip actually looks like at this time. Um, so I would ask that question to your doctor. Uh, and Fred, who earlier asked a question about um, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of pain treatments do you offer, and and you identified, but you said you have an associate, Dr. Vijapura, who treats back issues, and he asks, does she perform epidurals in the lower back? She does, and she's really good at it. Okay. Um, and that's a long question. Um, okay, Chandler has a question that I think many people kind of wonder if I have several areas of concern, does that require several different and distinct appointments and able to, in order to be able to address those issues? Um, so sometimes it's easy to it depends. <laughs> so sometimes when I see a patient for a hip, knee, and shoulder, and they all happened around the same time, they're all new injuries, it's easier to narrow that down than if you want to be seen for your foot that just started, your knee that's five, been bothering you for five years, and your neck that's been bothering you your whole life. Um, so when you make an appointment, we get an allotted amount of time. So if I feel like it's not safe or if I don't have the allotted time to dedicate the attention to the, if you have multiple areas, 
sometimes I'll say I need to see you back for this, but I do do my best to make your trip worthwhile um, if that's helpful. I just don't want to neglect anything. Uh, frankly, I have a question for you, Dr. Mahoney. You mentioned that primary care sports medicine is um, is something that is it is relatively new. Um, what's the history of primary care sports medicine? So I wouldn't call it new per se, um, but um, it's kind of more popular now for primary care sports medicine to be implemented within an orthopedic practice. It used to be more of the primary care sports medicine doctor stays with the team or stays in the family medicine clinics. And now um, everyone has seen the benefit of what having someone who is primary care sports medicine certified and has the experience and training in um, kind of head to toe care. Um, being a part of the orthopedic, especially in the walking setting, and how great that it is. Stephanie has a question. Um, MRI versus diagnostic ultrasound. That's a good question. So um, also another answer that I'm going to give is it depends. So the ultrasound is really fantastic for things that are outside of the joint, but it cannot see through bone. So if I'm worried about something in the bone, we're going to get it or in the joint where I can't see through it, we're gonna get a uh, MRI. Um, but if we're in the office with the with the ultrasound present, um, we can learn a lot from diagnostic ultrasound, and it doesn't require any real time. It's real quick. It's painless. Um, you don't have to worry about being claustrophobic or anything like that. Perfect. You have me at claustrophobia. Uh, Joan asks, my husband has severe spinal stenosis. He has had two steroid injections with very little improvement. What would be the next step? Sure. Um, huh. We'd have to know a few things. We'd have to know if there's a new injury, if anything has changed since his last injection. We would have to be able to look at the updated imaging. And that sounds like um, something that my counterpart, Dr. Bijapura, would be able to manage. And we'd also want to know when's the last time he's done physical therapy, things like that. There's a lot of questions we would want to know um, to be able to appropriately answer that. Steve asks, I don't understand when to come to a sports medicine doctor versus an orthopedist. So for something, something that I find people are comforted by is I don't do surgery. So if it's not something that you think you need to rush to the operating room, I think that's a great place to start. <clears throat> and Stephanie asks, <clears throat> as a follow-up to her question, MRI versus diagnostic ultrasound, what is the difference for you uh, in pain treatment uh, as a follow-on to an MRI or to a diagnostic ultrasound? Okay. Um, so if I'm worried about something in the joint, um, maybe you have had an injection in the joint before or it hasn't helped or you have a new injury and your knee keeps giving out something like that that's when we're going to order an mri and in that case an mri is sometimes used to potentially plan surgery an ultrasound is something that we would do when we're thinking about something outside the joint so if you have a new tear a sprain a strain um, if we want to do an injection like prp um, if we're trying to look at a really tiny joint and um, do an injection that way, um, those are times where we would use ultrasound. Um, the ultrasound itself does not provide pain relief. It's more of like extra information. And Dr. Mahoney, can you explain uh, PRP? Sure. So PRP is a really great... Um, kind of become more popular, but it's been around for a while. Um, treatment where we take your own blood, spin it down really fast in a centrifuge, and separate out the predominantly platelet portion. Um, it's been shown to be really great for early stages of arthritis, um, for some rotator cuff tears. Um, it's been studied in a lot of places, and we still have a lot more to do research-wise, but um, 
if people are willing to pursue that and interested, we're happy to work, to discuss the potential risks, benefits, alternatives, things like that. Um, but it is a procedure that we do do often here under ultrasound guidance. We'll take just a few more questions. I have one from Linda. Uh, my knees are bad and they hurt, and now my back hurts. Could this be coming from the way I'm walking or would this be maybe two different issues? Yeah, um, we get that type of question quite often here. Um, and that's a good thing that we would want to evaluate um, in person, watch you walking, try to do a physical exam on your knees and your back, try to narrow out exactly what symptoms are happening and why. Um, so that's something that would be really great to be able to see you in the office for. Uh, Jim asks, are injections effective in treating joint pain? Absolutely, if it's the appropriate type of joint pain. So we would look at your x-ray, we would look at your physical exam, and then determine the best course of treatment. And oftentimes, yes, we do a lot of hip injections, and sometimes people walk out of the office feeling so great. Uh, Chandler, who has helped us out with more than a few questions, asks, um, how does holistic medicine fit into your background, or, or does it? Um, so I'm a DO, um, also um, something we could have started with talking earlier in the um, stream, but um, we do a lot of hands-on things. So we learn all the same things that we learned in MD school, take the same exams, but we learn a lot of things by feel and potential treatments with the hands, which is more holistic. I also have a particular interest in nutrition. So when I'm counseling, a lot of times I'll talk about um, ideal protein intake, um, potential supplements that we could um, kind of introduce to maximize recovery. Uh, so I do like to think about the whole thing. I like to think about what cost are these treatments and how can that affect a person? Um, what resources are available? How hard is it to get to physical therapy? Are they walking on campus or are they driving? Those are all things that we like to think about and then kind of make sure that our treatment goes along with all the resources available to the specific patient. <clears throat> well, that is bringing us towards a close. So let me ask this final question. What's your favorite post-exercise or post-gardening snack? <laughs> um, I guess Halloween being this week, I have candy on my mind, so probably peanut M&Ms. Okay. <laughs> and their benefit is? There's some protein, a little okay. bit. <laughs> and they make <laughs> you <sugar>. happy. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you so much. Um, and please let me uh, give you a moment to wrap it up and say farewell to everyone. It was nice to virtually meet everybody. Thank you for your questions. I hope it was helpful um, and I'd love to see you in the office. Thanks very much.